Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher, and welcome to All About Canadian Books. Behind every book is a fabulous story, and today we will find out the story behind Janet Troll's short story collection, Something's Burning. Janet Troll has won several writing awards, including a CBC Canada Writes Challenge, a Western Magazine Award nomination, and a Commonwealth Fiction Prize. Hot Town and Other Stories, her debut collection of short fiction, was published by At Bay Press. Troll's new book, Something's Burning, is a CBC recommendation read from the fall of 2022, and it was also published by At Bay Press. Janet, welcome to All About Canadian Books. Thanks, Crystal. Thanks for the invitation. I'm so excited to be talking to you today about your short story collection, and it has a fabulous cover. Can you show us? Oh, there's yes, something burning. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, my gosh. I just started with the cover because uh, it's a little controversial. People have worried that uh, the cat was on fire. So the cat is not the thing that's burning. In fact, this uh, tomcat is Charlie and Charlie's in one of the stories in fact the story with the title something's burning and uh, he happens to be guarding the gates of hell so uh, it's just a little uh, just a little smoke in the background <laughs> well I'm so glad that Charlie is okay <laughs> no animals were harmed in the publication of this book none <laughs> I promise. <laughs> That's good. So Something's Burning is a collection of 22 short stories. Um, Janet, can you tell us a little bit about the short story genre, please? Yeah, the, sh the uh, short story genre is my favorite genre as a reader. I find I can get through a short story before I fall asleep at night. And uh, since I was young, I, I loved the stories of Alice Munro, and um, I really identified with her small town, quirky characters, uh, her honesty. And so um, I think I was so pleased when she um, won the Nobel Prize for Literature because it really elevated the short story genre. It used to be just something that you would read in magazines, and now there are many collections. I think it's becoming more popular because people don't have as much time to read. Mm -hmm. Now, you say that your stories are small towns with universal themes. Uh, can you mm -hmm. expand on that for us, Janet, please? Well, I think everything that uh, you find throughout the world is uh, can be found in a small town, in a village. Um, anthropology tells us that villages have been around for 11,000 years. And it seems to me that for 11,000 years, villagers have loved that sense of belonging and tried to keep others out, foreigners out, and even more so today with uh, the protectionism that we see throughout the world. Uh, but these days, the, um, the ramparts have been breached from within, and people are more likely to have disagreements with uh, people in their own households or their neighbors um, that because uh, we just have a, a new lexicon that is separating us uh, with understandings of of modern life yeah and you know with the with the holiday season upon us it certainly makes for some interesting family dinners doesn't it well, it really does. I mean, I, I'm proud of people. I think most people are really um, trying hard to understand others at this point. So especially this time of year. Yeah. Okay, so your book is divided into four sections. And I, I love this. We've got Tinder, Spark, Inferno, and Coals, which is it's just beautiful. So how does the imagery of fire connect your stories well I love a campfire we're a family where we get a lot of um, stories told around the campfire and so I um, think a lot about the uh, the life of a fire and tinder is really what you need to start the fire a little birch bark 
little cattail fluff, maybe some newspaper. And uh, those are the conversations that you hear that start the idea of a short story. So um, that's those beginning stories, a lot of them are based on memories. Um, the next section is called Spark. And uh, that's where I have to thank a lot of friends and family members for their stories, because those are the things that really bring a story to life. And um, yeah, it can sizzle for a while and almost burn out. But uh, people, yeah, people are good storytellers, especially in my town. So um, I appreciate the, their contributions. Uh, then there's Inferno. Inferno is more uh, universal themes um, because I think we're in a time right now where betrayal uh, is um, and belonging are, are kind of uh, working at odds. And those themes come through in, in the Inferno. There's some anger and uh, hopefully ways to resolve some of those uh, things. And finally, Coals, the stories in the section called Coals. I, I really am always amazed how coals can um, keep burning through the night. And you look out in the morning and think that you doused the fire the night before, but the coals stay alive somehow. And um, uh, as we go through life, lots of times the stories from our childhood will, will uh, come along and, and flare up again in, um, in our later years. And come to life. So the, the stories in Coles are, um, are some of my favorites. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> now, um, can you describe your writing process, Janet? Well, I'm a morning person. I get right to work in the morning, uh, sometimes still in my uh, house coat. And um, I think it's because I have such a lively uh, subconscious during the night my dream dream world is uh, pretty active so lots of times I have to get those ideas um, out of my head and on paper as fast as possible it might be an essay or a newspaper article or a letter to the editor or uh, one of my projects which could be a short story um, or a novel Oh, fabulous. So you've got a lot on the go then. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, actually, I have a novel coming up uh, to be published in September 2023. Imagine 2023 coming up uh, and uh, by a small independent press in Coburg, Ontario called Blue Denim Press. And uh, yeah, this story is called The End of the Line, which is about my hometown set in 1878. Uh, because in 1878, the railway came to town. And you can imagine, just like today, the railway brought all kinds of immigrants and foreigners and caused uh, many local people a lot of uh, angst. And um, also, it was the end of the line. It was a railway that was supposed to go all the way to Ottawa and connect with the CPR and never did because uh, our geography is too harsh. The railway magnet said, that's it. Halliburton is going to be the end of the line. And that must have been really interesting researching, doing all that local research. It really was. And, uh, you know, although women are mentioned in the stories because they uh, they had it rough in these little cabins while men spent the winter at the logging camps. Yeah. Um, so I tried to really focus on women's voices in this novel. Oh, fabulous. I can't wait to read it. Good. So you said September of 2023? That's right. The countdown, the countdown is on. <laughs> That's right. I'm doing the final editing right now. Oh, fabulous. Janet, thank you so much for coming on um, today's show and chatting about your new sto short story collection, uh, mm -hmm. Something's Burning. And can you hold it up for us again so we can see that yes. gorgeous cover? Oh, yeah. Hi, Charlie. <laughs> Here we go. Yes, uh, uh, I love the way the um, publisher put uh, something's burning in matchsticks. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, it's it's a beautifully uh, designed book. So kudos to Matt Jowdry at uh, at Bay Press. Yeah, we you know, we are so lucky to live in Canada. There's so much Canadian talent and these Canadian independent presses are fabulous. Agreed. 
Agreed. Yeah, I uh, they've the ones who um, have made it through COVID are uh, I I give them a lot of credit. So um, yeah, we're still here. We're we're still appreciating um, Canadian authors and uh, poets and writers of all kinds. So thanks very much for featuring them on your show. Oh, it's you know it's my honor and I am just so excited because we we do we've got a lot of incredible Canadian talent and we've got all of these incredible Canadian publishers mm -hmm. and I think now more than ever we have to support local so whether it be shopping for Christmas or birthday gifts or just for books in general you know support your local bookstore your local independent yes. publisher and and Canadian talent. So there's our big plug. Yay, Canada. <laughs> Absolutely. I have a couple of uh, book events coming up at uh, independent bookstores. Wow. And so Blue Heron in Uxbridge and um, Different Drummer in Burlington. So uh, maybe I'll see you there. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, everyone, viewers, thank you so much for watching. And Janet, thank you for being a fabulous guest. Bye, Thanks, everyone. Crystal. Bye. Take care.